Welcome to the CubeCon and Cloud Native Com Europe 2021. This talk is about building MLOps POCs and sandbox environment using K3S and Argo. I am Sergio Mendes. A little bit about me, I am an operating system professor. I am Cloud Native enthusiast. I really like to play with Cloud Native technologies. Uh, I do some DevOps at Jalo. I am the organizer of Cloud Native Guatemala. I am a linker the hero. Let's get started with some cartoon first, showing how we depend on technology and these things and how machine learning is going to substitute or works in the future. Basic concepts. You have to see some basic concepts before jump to the technical part. POC of proof of concepts. Uh, POC is used to evaluate different kind of technologies, uh, solution and context and the learning code goes and that kind of things. So we use a POC to compare different technologies in order to solve a problem. So we experiment and do things to determine which technology is better to solve that problem. A sandbox environment is pretty similar than production, but it's just for testing purposes. So you can run and trust the software without risk there. It's a controlled environment and can be used for testing, POCs, and you can have access to some similar data from production. Each computing in the other side refers that, let's say, that you are close to the source of data, so you want to process the information there. Let's say that you are close to the data and you want to process the information with your smartphone. Let's say it could be possible, uh, but the, that doesn't mean that the cloud is going to be disappeared. That means that the cloud is coming to you because you are going to process the things with your own devices. And each computing refers to the distributed geographic computing and that things. Some use cases for edge computing could be machine learning, IoT, applications, data processing, games, or any workload. Um, talking about DevOps, DevOps refers to the collaboration between the operations and the developers and this kind of workflows where you are going to build test really software in a really fast way with CICD pipelines and that kind of things. A pipeline that is a really common concept using on DevOps. Um, here is a concept that shows what is a data pipeline, but it's pretty similar that let's say that is a series of steps that maybe the output of one asset could be the input from another step. So it's really awesome to understand that pipeline in that way, the concept. MLOps in, in the other side refers more to the automation of the model generation. Talking more about how to design, build and manage these processes that you are generating a model, getting predictions in order to push your ML powered software in some way. This diagram refers pretty, pretty close um, to the way that there are some diagrams on the internet about DevOps and refers really, really nice. But in the context of MLOps, MLOps contains the data, the model and the code. Let's say that the data change you have to regenerate the model. Maybe you can do some modifications to your code. Maybe you, you want to regenerate your model too. And this, this includes the whole cycle of the MLOps in general. So there are difference between DevOps and MLOps. Let's classify it. There are different users. For DevOps, you are going to see developers, operators, let's say SRE, DevOps, cloud engineers, MLOps guys, data scientists, 
MLOps engineers and that kind of thing. So DevOps focus more on developers and MLOps more than the science teams part and data. So they are pretty, pretty different. The artifacts that DevOps generates or they are getting touch are more like GitHub repositories or Git repositories source files made with multiple programming languages. And MLOps is more focused on machine learning models and data sets. DevOps use different technologies. Uh, it's common to hear that people mention front ends of front end frameworks, back end frameworks, languages, databases like Vue.js, Python, Java, MySQL, etc. In MLOps context, the people mention more models about data and technologies like Python, scikit-learn, TensorFlow, that are libraries to generate machine learning models, and Jupyter Notebooks for the experiments, Apache Spark for data processing, and the whole ecosystem of Hadoop, and why not Airflow? It has different goals. DevOps looks more for the software, deploys some application on the cloud, and have some quality assurance for the software, fast deployments, CICD pipelines, but MLOps is trying to automate the model generation, the predictions, the inference, and optimize that kind of workflows. They are like, let's say, two kind of experiments, like the static experiments that are ready to be passed to production environment, so the code is not going to change anymore. It's ready, it's stable. So maybe you want to schedule this kind of experiments periodically, weekly, monthly, yearly. There are dynamic experiments um, that are under development by data scientists. The code is constantly changed, it's unstable and that kind of things. <clears throat> there are some benefits for MLOps in the context of the containers. So the containers can bring you um, package the logic of the experiments, can freeze the library versions, can give you that portability for the experiments. And maybe you can share these containers with the experiments across the different teams of data scientists. And why not implement that kind of GitOps to generate these models and these experiments? or to automate these experiments. Let's remember that MLOps is not only technology, it's people, it's experiment, it's data. You have to organize that, that people, that experiments and data in order to get valuable predictions and in order to implement successfully MLOps environment or culture. There are some technologies for POCs and machine learning pipelines that you can use. K3S, for example, is a certified Kubernetes distribution that can use ARM architecture and is ready for IoT and edge computing. It has support for Intel architecture too. Uh, the amazing thing is that K3S includes the whole components of the regular Kubernetes clusters in only one binary. Uh, has um, several different backends like MySQL, etc. Includes uh, Ingress, Preinstaller, Helm support, Network support, Container D for the containers. And please remember that if you are using uh, ARM architecture or devices, you have to recompile your libraries or applications if needed in order to support that architecture and then you will be ready for edge computing. Because this kind of architecture is pretty really commonly used in this context of edge computing and compile or performs this kind of workflows. So the companies right now are migrating to edge computing to reduce costs for their workflows. Argo workflows in this side is a piece of software to create this automation, these pipelines, and it's designed to run on Kubernetes. There are different features for Argo. Uh, you can execute a step inside a container, your workflow, uh, your DAG um, 
can be defined in a file like a simple directed acyclic graph, a pretty simple syntax using YAML. Argo is Kubernetes native, cloud agnostic. Um, you can use work, uh, Argo workflows for different things instead of machine learning, just to implement a regular CI CD with less complexity. Argo CD in the other side is a complement for Argo workflows. Um, you have to use Argo CD just for continuous delivery and deployment. And it's designed to, for Kubernetes. Uh, this supports different formats of configuration like hemp chart, customize JSON files, YAML, or why not your custom plugins for your custom configurations. Don't forget Argo events and rollouts. It's part of the whole Argo ecosystem to define a really, really nice CI CD or MLOps workflows. You can use K3S as a lightweight environment plus Argo uh, on the edge or maybe for POCs. Argo could replace Apache Airflow maybe Beans, Luigi, MLflow, or other ML solutions like SageMaker, or maybe it could be a complement for your current solution. The benefits is that with this kind of technologies, you are going to spend less money for POCs. Instead of a cluster, why not a virtual machine with K3S? Um, using K3S and Argo and Argo workflows and CD, they are prepared for edge computing and IoT. They are cloud agnostic, pretty lightweight and high scalable. And there are no vendor locking because you are using open source. The demonstration, uh, we are using Argo workflows and Argo CD installed on a K3S one node cluster, let's say. It's not a cluster. Um, we are going to execute some simple pipelines and we are going to show the code that we are using for that. The architecture of this demo is like there are four steps for the basic MLOps pipeline. It's really in a CSV file with the scores of students uh, It's going to predict uh, the final score. Um, in the extraction uh, transformation loading step, Step number one is reading this information, cleaning this information, deleting columns, generating a processed CSV file that is reading for the step number two for the training and generate this model with that file. And this is going to generate this model and these files are going to be uploaded to a bucket on Google Cloud, less uh, temporal storage. And the step of the deployment is going to read this model and it's going to call Argo CD that detects a Helm chart that creates a deployment using this model to expose this model as an API with an endpoint with an ingress controller. And for the inference, we are going to access this endpoint to get these predictions and generate a final CSV file with these predictions. Let's call it the inference. Uh, so let's move to that part. So right now, let's let me start our Google workflows. Let's access the UI. So right now it's ready. Yeah, so right now we have the Argo workflows. Here's the dash dashboard and the things. There are several current workflows that were executed in the past. Here's Argo CD. You have to configure your repository on GitHub that detects the Helm chart. And you have to create an application um, and here, this is going to show your deployment, regular deployment with the reference revisions, and Argo is going to perform that deployment. 
And let's execute the very simple pipeline from Argo workflows. So in this side, let's move to the repository. Let's Argo workflows uh, has a CLI that's pretty, pretty awesome. Let's clean the CLI. So it's going to show you the steps here and the command line interface. So this is really, really nice. Um, so you can visualize this thing the Argo workflows is right now here. Let's reload the this part. Basically, it's going to show you. Let's zoom a little bit. This uh, this step is for getting two steps that is running in parallel. It's going to show the log here and basically call a whale container with a custom message in the logs. So each step has their own log with a custom message. Here shows the same thing. And yeah, that's a pretty basic, basic pipeline. Um, let me show you the the basic MLOps workflow that we already have here. Okay, here is the whole MLOps pipeline that is going to execute the process that we explained in the architecture of the demo. So let's call it Qcom test one. We are going to execute this part. So this thing maybe will need more space to show training on these things. And maybe it's going to need a little bit of more space here is showing the whole process, it's executing the ETL process, the model, the training, and these things. So right now is showing a real time is in the part of the inference right now. The other steps are in green crawlers, so are in progress right now. Yeah, so it's done. Let me open here. So run really perfectly. And we can see how this thing calls, let's call it the test number two, how this thing calls Argo CD. So right now it's in the ETL process. Um, so right now it's in the training. The next step is to deploy the model. So let's move here. It's going to change in some moments. Yeah, right now it's changing. It's replacing the old pods and that kind of things. So right now it's refreshing the things. Yeah, so right now it's moving. Everything looks fine. It's deleting pods, updating the things. And yeah, that's it. It's ready. Uh, let's say that, for example, we can execute another, another, well, let's call it the test tree. I don't know if I executed, um, yeah, it's this part. It's going to execute the same part. And in Argo, you are going to see like a kind of history. Well, right now it's trying to deploy 
another, let's say, right if the data change or the code or something like that. And right now it's changing the things. And what if there is a mistake or there's a need that return to that previous version. So here's um, an option in the history rollback. Um, you can roll back the previous version. Right now it's in the part number three. In the Cubans test, Cubicon test two, let's roll back to that, to that version. Right now it's doing that rollback. Um, yeah, it's, it's doing the things. Right now I, I can show you the, a little bit of code of the things. Well, we have here the Helm chart. This is a repo that I can share with you people. The part of the pipelines is the MLOps simple pipeline here. So you define the variables and these things. This is optional if you want to use a token for Argo. So you parameterize the things. You include the different steps, the ATL, the training, the serve, the inference. And each step, you have to create a kind of template pretty similar like Tecton. Um, so you call a container and send parameters and um, values about it, for example. And you have to parameterize the whole thing. And um, let me show you another part of the code. Well, here in the part of the containers, um, here's the ATL process. That is basically Python code. Let's see a little bit the index here. It's a pretty basic Python code that do the cleaning thing with using pandas and that kind of libraries. Then let's move to the model training, maybe. It's like uploading the things. Downloading the processed file and generating the model and uploading the model here. This part. All the experiments are based on the scores of students. And in the part of the inference is calling the endpoint that is parameterized here in the function of prediction. So in the end, it's going to generate this inference file that we can see here on our repo. Let's see here in our storage, in our Cubicon U 2021 project on Google Cloud. So here's the inference file. This the initial file, the model and the processor part. And the Helm chart is in this part that this Helm folder is going to be read by Argo in order to deploy the thing. And that's it. That's the general Argo workflows, Argo CD and K3S. Some of the resources that I use for this demo is the official websites, K3S and Argo, Workflows and CD, the slides, if you want to see my slides. Um, the repository at GitHub, you can replicate this whole experiment and understand step by step. 
my personal email and I am in the social networks as Sergio RMGPL and thank you very much for the opportunity.